Today we're going to learn how to load in data inside our websites without having to refresh the browser first. And we're going to do this using Ajax. And as you guys can see in front of me here, I have a very basic example of what exactly Ajax can do inside a website. So what you guys see in front of you is a very basic comment field. Now, right now, there's nothing to comment on. It could be a post or a video, but right now we have a comment field with two posts. One is by Daniel and one is by John. And let's say I have a thousand comments to this, whatever I'm posting on in here. Now, instead of showing a thousand comments, when you enter the page, which would actually take up a lot of resources each time you had to load the page because a thousand comments is a thousand comments, we can limit the comments by saying we only want to show two of the comments. And then if the user wants to, we can actually show more comments by clicking a button. Now, this is something we could actually do without using Ajax, but if I were to do without Ajax, we would have to refresh the browser each time we click the button. Meaning that if I were to load a hundred posts, I would have to scroll back down to the comments each time I click the button because it refreshes the browser and takes me back to the top each time. So Ajax allow for you to do this without having to refresh the browser each time, which is a very cool feature to have inside programming. So this is what we're going to learn how to do today using the jQuery function called load, which allow for us to do this. Now, this example that I'm showing you guys here, if I were to actually click the button, you guys can see I'm actually loading in more posts and I'm not going to get taken back to the top each time I click the button, which is what we want to do. Now, this example here, we're not going to build today. We're going to do that in the next episode because it involves using PHP code. And since you don't have to use PHP code to use the load function inside jQuery, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys without using PHP code and databases first. And then afterwards in the next episode, we're going to do it using databases because I think a lot of you guys came here to learn how to do this using databases. So if I were to go inside my coding document, you guys can see I have a very basic HTML5 setup. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to go ahead and include a div box down here in the body tags that has some content in it. And then when we click a certain button, we're going to go ahead and load in some new data or some new content and put it inside this div box here. So let's start out by creating a div box. So we can actually show you guys the load feature inside Ajax. And inside this div box, I'm going to go and include a paragraph tag. I'm going to say this is the first content, like so. And we're going to go ahead and give this div an ID, just so we can pinpoint it using Ajax. So we're going to say we have an ID, which is equal to test, just to give it something. I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to go up inside my script tags, which I decided to include inside my head tags. So we need to make sure we include a function that only allow for us to load the script tag last when we load the page, because otherwise all the jQuery code is going to get loaded first. We don't want to do that. We want to load it last. So in order to load it last, we're going to go and include a selector inside jQuery. And inside the selector, we're going to go ahead and choose the document we're inside of right now. So I'm going to say document dot ready parentheses, semicolon. And then whatever goes inside the parentheses is only going to get loaded after the entire website has actually loaded. So we're going to say we have a function in here that is going to get run when we actually have the entire website loaded. And inside this function, we're going to go and include all the jQuery code we're going to have inside our website. So the first thing we're going to do in here, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the exact jQuery function that allows for us to use Ajax and get data from the server and insert it inside somewhere inside our website. So the way we do that is we're going to go and include a selector. We're going to go ahead and choose the exact place we want to insert the new data from where we get it from. So I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to insert it inside this div down here called ID test. So we're going to say hashtag test. And afterwards, we're going to say dot load. Now inside the jQuery load function, which is using Ajax, we have three different parameters we can use. One is the URL. We need to point to the actual path, you know, to the file we want to load in. The second one is going to be data we want to include when we want to send a request for the new data that we want to load in. And the third parameter is a callback, which allows for us to do something once it's done, loading in some kind of data. Now, right now, we haven't actually set some kind of event before we load in the content, because right now, if we were to just run this thing, then we would never actually see this text down here because it's just going to load as soon as the document has loaded. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and include a button. And I'm just going to go ahead and go beneath my div down here. Now, do pay attention to not include any kind of button inside the div tags because everything inside this 
div tag here is going to get replaced once we do actually click the button. So the button needs to be below the actual div tags. Now inside the button, I'm gonna include some text. I'm just gonna say, click to change or to use Ajax or something cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this button an ID. So we're gonna say we have an ID set to BTN for button. Then I'm gonna go back to the top. And then before the jQuery Ajax function down here, I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a selector that selects the button by saying we have an ID called BTN. Then we want to say dot click parentheses to include a click event. And then inside the parentheses, we're gonna go ahead and say we want to run a function once we click this button down there. So I'm gonna say we have a function, parentheses, curly brackets, and then we want to insert the load function with jQuery inside this event, like so. So now we basically need to fill in the parameters inside the load function here. But before we do that, we need to actually have something to insert inside our div down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new document. And I'm gonna go ahead and save it as some type of document. We can do a HTML document, we can do a text document, we can do a PHP document. We can do all sorts of documents that we want to insert inside the div tags. So in my case here, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a very basic text document. So I'm gonna call this one data.text.txt and I'm gonna go ahead and save it inside my root folder. Now inside this document, I'm gonna go ahead and create maybe something like a new paragraph. So we're gonna say we have a p tag and inside the p tag, we have something like this is the new data exclamation mark. Then we're gonna close the p tags again, like so. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna go ahead and go back inside my index file because inside the load function inside jQuery, we need to tell it the URL to the actual file that we want to insert, which is data.txt. So we're gonna go ahead and say double quotes inside the first parameter and say we have a data.txt. And this is basically all we need to do to actually load in the data. But just to let you guys know, we do actually have two more parameters we could include if we wanted to. And in the next episode, we will actually be using one of these parameters. But for now, this is basically all we need to do in order to load in data inside our website. Now, there's one more thing we need to do before we can actually get this working, because right now, if we were to go back inside my website and actually click the button we just included, you guys can see that nothing happens inside the browser. And that is because right now I didn't actually include jQuery inside my code. So we need to go in and download jQuery first, or at least link to it using a CDN. So I'm going to go ahead and go into jQuery.com. And inside jQuery.com, I'm going to go ahead and say download jQuery. I'm going to scroll down and use a CDN, which is basically just that we load in the, the jQuery code from online without having to download the entire jQuery library. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a CDN. And down here where it does actually say using jQuery with a CDN, there's a button that takes us into code.jQuery.com. I'm gonna go ahead and get the minified version of the latest one. So I'm gonna click it. Then I'm gonna copy the code and include it inside my head tags that has the code we just wrote in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and include the script tags right here, which is the link to the actual jQuery. Just gonna make sure it looks nice. Like so, and like so. So now this should actually be working. So we were to go back inside my browser. Now we loaded in jQuery, so we'd actually use jQuery down here to load Ajax. If we were to then go inside our file, refresh, you guys can see when I do actually click the button, it changes to the new data. Now, before we end off the episode, I want to show you guys the last two parameters we have inside the load function inside jQuery. So if we were to go back down inside our code and go inside our load function down here, you guys will notice that the first parameter, like I said, is the URL to the actual file. Then the second parameter, by writing a comma, is going to be some kind of data we want to include inside when we load the data inside the text file. Now, if you know about basic HTML forms, you'll know that we have something called a post method and a get method. So when we do actually, you know, click submit or something inside a form inside a website, then we send a post or get method to a certain file, which means that it passes some data to the file which then means we can use the data inside the next document. So this down here is basically the same thing. When we do actually have the second parameter, we load in data using a post method to the next file, which in this case is data.txt. So if I were to include some data in here, I can go ahead and write curly brackets, and then say we have the first data called, I don't know, let's call it data one. 
meaning that when we do get the post method, it's going to be called data one, call one, and then equal to whatever it needs to be equal to. So right now I could say that data one is equal to Daniel, which is a name. We could actually change this to name. And then afterwards, if I want to include more data, I'm going to say comma space last name colon Nielsen if I wanted to. I can also move this down to the next line to make sure it looks a bit nicer. Like so, and like so. So now we have two pieces of data inside a string that we want to pass on to the data.txt document. So we can actually get the data either using JavaScript or PHP. So we can actually do something with it. So if you want to pass data, you can do it this way. Now the last parameter we have is something called a callback. Now the callback, like I mentioned, is a piece of code that we want to run once it's done loading this load function here. So we would say we want to have a function and inside this function that we do actually run once it's done loading the text in, we want to alert something inside the browser. So I'm going to say alert and I want to alert hi there. Like so. If we were to save this, go inside my browser. Now the second parameter we included inside our load function is not going to do anything we can actually see inside the browser because it's only going to pass on data to the data.txt document we created. And because we're not doing anything with the data inside that document, we're not going to do anything inside the browser here. But the third parameter, which is the callback, is going to do something once we click the button, it's actually going to show us a message inside the browser. So if we were to click, we get some kind of confirmation that the load function did actually run inside our browser. Then I can click OK, and you guys can see that the data changes inside our website. So this is basically how we can load in data from a server. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.